Hello, Medicare System is a manufacturer company from Barcelona, with an experience of 20 years proposing innovative solutions to patients and healthcare professionals. Today I want to talk to you about some simple tools but also very effective in patient care. There are many devices in the market, and it would be impossible in such a short time to include all of them, so I am going to focus on some specific areas that I consider practical for all of us. By this I mean that exists aids which not only serve to improve the quality of care and treatment of patients, but it also optimize the effort of caregivers and avoid health risks, with consequent improvement in its quality of care and a substantial increase in safety in their work environment. This problem has a greater dimension than might appear at first glance, according to the European Agency for Safety and Health at Work, the manipulation of patients is, in many cases, responsible for the appearance of physical fatigue and injuries that can occur either immediately or formed by the accumulation of small injuries, taking shape after making the mobilization of patients in short periods and repeatedly. Transfer and mobilization of patients is an everyday activity but includes various risk factors worth considering. On numerous occasions the professionals perform demonstrations in unsafe conditions most of the time due to lack of training and safe mobilization techniques or the absence or deficiency of support tools. It's no wonder why the profession such tasks are between those with a higher incidence of back pain and herniated discs. The main actions which may constitute a hazard to workers in mobilizing people are among others, postural changes and mobilization of bedridden, transfers, for example, from the bed to a stretcher or from the bed to a wheelchair or vice versa. In any case, the specific mobilization technique used depends mainly on the resources, the type of patient who is going to take action, weight, physical condition and degree of cooperation that can provide, and the type of action to be carried out, postural changes, transfers or transportation, in each of its variants. It's true that there are some rules to lift loads safely, but according to the American Nurses Association, are not applicable in this case because it can't mobilize a patient like a charge, because you can't hold to keeping patients close to the body because patients have no handles because you can't predict what will happen while a patient is mobilized because patients are bulky. Any operation of manual mobilization, even in cases where assistive devices are used, requires the application of several basic principles, which according to Annexes I and II to Directive 9269 EECR, always request the assistance necessary, for example, in the case of a patient transfer from bed to stretcher and vice versa, must be performed by various participants, at least two, and the used device-specific support for such cases as the sliding tubular boards, as Matty Roller. Maintain proper posture during operations of manual mobilization patients. Keep well attached to the patient during operations of manual mobilization. The patient's weight is not distributed symmetrically so it is essential to have controlled its center of gravity. Central to this is the use of belts and auxiliary bands specific for that task. Following we will see some examples of how to mobilize and transfer patients effectively, easily and safely in different situations. In this video we will see the correct technique for patient transfer from a stretcher to a bed. As we see, the action is performed by two people. In this case, the assistive device used is the Mediroller tubular sliding board. It can be seen as, in addition, the patient's own sheet is used as an aid. You can also see how the caregivers keep their back straight and correct posture. You can check the patient sliding is done in complete comfort and safety, without application of large forces or forced movements. This board supports the weight of patients up to 200 kg and saves unevenness or distances between the bed and the stretcher of up to 20 cm. In this video we will see how to reposition a patient in bed. 
As we see, the patient needs to be relocated into bed. Here the presence of only one caregiver is necessary. The caregiver place under the patient body a sliding tubular translide sheet, performing a simple lateralization. Once the sheet is placed under the patient, there are several ways to perform repositioning. One way is by moving the patient as seen in the video. Another way is to move the tubular sheet upward. Its high slip also makes the patient move effortlessly. A third way is using an auxiliary band that allows moving the patient between two people, which requires less effort yet. The sliding tubular sheet is removed and the patient is correctly positioned in bed. In this video we see as through the use of small technical aids it facilitates the transfer of a patient from a chair to a bed. Hold on to the patient is very important, for that we put to him a belt with handles. Calf band allows us to have a point of support to lift the patient with less effort, holding by the belt. Remember to slightly bend your legs and keep your back straight. Once the patient is standing up, we use the turntable to rotate the patient about its vertical axis without him having to make a move. With two simple movements of 45 degrees put the patient to the bed. Remove the patient's belt and use the handles of the band calves to lay patient on the bed with one movement. If you carry out these practices regularly, Professional caregivers avoid any possibility of injury that can become serious with the A study by the Compensation Board of British Columbia Workers estimated that 85% of nurses suffer such ailments at some point in his career, which translates into an annual cost of 6 billion euros for European hospitals. But as we have seen in these videos, Transfer or mobilize a patient does not have to be a task involving risk or difficulty for the patient or the caregiver if appropriate techniques and tools are used. Another disease which often suffer many hospitalized patients are decubitus ulcers or bed sores. It is skin wounds caused by the pressure exerted by the body itself to be long time in the same position. According to a recent study, only in Spain, between 57,000 and 100,000 people are attended daily by developing a pressure ulcer, most of them generated in hospitals. In addition, hospital stay increases up to five times when the patient develops a sore and the average hospital cost is close to double that in a normal situation hospitalization. The most common areas where it is usually present is in the bony prominences. It can affect people of any age if kept for a long time in the same position and also combined with other factors such as excess moisture, poor circulation, nutritional disorder, etc. In these situations you should perform a series of skin care to prevent ulcers, such as maintaining good hygiene, control humidity, avoid sweating, etc. But it is also essential the use of devices that absorb pressure from prominent parts of the body from simple and inexpensive cushioning material made from soft touch pads, very versatile and useful for short stays, to the most advanced protective padding with breathable providing the patient with a stable and comfortable positioning, improving their rest and dispersing the pressure, thus preventing the occurrence of dead sores.
Another area where our welcome aids is in the case of patients who have lost, for whatever reason, their self-control capacity. We are talking about people who suffer any kind of psychomotor agitation by disorientation, psychiatric disorder, drug consumption or withdrawal or situations of relative sensory disconnection. After surgery, eye operations are periods of income in the eye coup. In this case it's sufficient to use a simple light restraint systems that help the patient regain his self-control in a not aggressive and security way for himself and his surroundings so. A padded strap allows simple relative control of the patient's limbs without causing stress or abrasion damage to the skin. This is a light and temporary restraint to be administered by competent medical personnel and continuous supervision until finally the patient regains his self-control capacity. For patients who spend most of their time sitting in chair or wheelchair and at risk of falling, you can eliminate this risk using vests and belts that help the patient to remain in the correct position. There are different levels of safety in the design of these vests and belts, applicable depending on the needed therapy in each case. If this is the case the restraint to be applied in both bed and chair is high security. Then we must seek a restraint system that has a few of very important requirements. Comfort. If the restraint system is awkward it will cause rejection and further turmoil in the patient. It's easier to transmit a message of protection and concern for their welfare if the elements used are not harmful. Safety. The restraint system should be able to restrict the patient's movements in a flexible way, allowing varying degrees of movement in terms of therapy to apply and always preventing the patient may self-harm or harm to others. It is also a key element of security which the patient has no possibility of opening restraint devices applied. Simple use. Safe restraint devices must be placed easily by a small team, in a short time and without requiring repositioning of the patient during aptly. In this sense there is something that is vital to use a restraint system securely, the appropriate training of health personnel. A bed-placed restraint device can pose a serious risk to the patient's life and this is a great responsibility for both the health professional who uses it and the institution in which the patient is admitted. This is the reason that secure restraint systems that manufacture Medicare system does not consist only of the mechanical devices themselves, also included, so inherent and inescapable. A comprehensive training to ensure that no risk to any patient that it is applied. Here you can see, for example, a video that is used in our training program, with step by step to place a salvific abdominal belt. Video divides the process into three parts preparation of material. Fixation to the bed and the patient application. As you can see, the video shows clear instructions in a very visual way, even so, it is also subtitled in the language of being trained to better secure the different concepts. We see only two people can apply the restraint system. The device itself has references and visual aids to facilitate proper placement. Here we see how the locks lacks any type of keyhole, so the patient can't manipulate it to block, make it unusable or release. Magnetic key system is used for opening.
Memory Pro Alphanumeric Patented System detects changes in abdominal measure and memorize the alphanumeric configuration suitable for each patient. The perineal band prevents the patient to slide down, thus avoiding choking hazard. The patient comfort is essential to make the system safe and effective. As we have seen during these minutes, there are many devices that help healthcare professionals to better care for hospitalized patients, improving quality of care and also improving the safety and health of caregivers. For more information on these devices and others, visit the website viewed on the screen. Thank you very much for your attention.